Hello chess fans, this is Rick from Chess to Progress with number 8 in the series Compositions. I found another three wonderful compositions for you and that's really the artistic side of chess. In all three positions it's white to play and win and every time there is something beautiful going on. Let's have a look at this one, it's from J. Munch, published in 1907, white to play and win. Not a very game-like position, these pieces look weird, this bishop has never played and the king is there in the corner. It's important to see that all these four pieces of blacks are still mated, they cannot move, they are not allowed to make a move and still mate is indeed one of the motifs in this position. Black also has two pawns here, which can be taken very easily by white, but if white takes for example the pawn on c2, we have a stillmate straight away. Because black has to play b4, that's the only move. And then for example let's make a move for white, knight d4. Then b3 check is the only move. You cannot take the pawn because then it's stillmate, then we have a draw. But after a move like king c3, black plays b2 and now you have to take the pawn because otherwise black queens, king takes b2 and it's stillmate and a draw. So, that doesn't work. Let's go back to the start. We cannot take the pawn on c2, it's not that simple. The first move for white is d2, d4. Okay, that makes sense, that's a passed pawn, we have to play up our passed pawn up the board. And black only has one answer, that's very easy, b4, that's the only legal move he can make. And if you now play d5, we have a stillmate again, that's a draw. And that means you have to make another move. You have to play king d2 here, the only way to win. It really is the only way if you would play king b2 instead. That leads to a draw again. Black has to promote, only move. c1 queen check, knight takes c1, b3. And this game is going to end in a draw by stillmate. There is nothing white can do. He will have to take the b-pawn at some stage. So back to the move from the solution, king d2, why does this work then? Well, again, black has no option, you have to promote c1 queen. And it's important now that the knight takes the queen, not the king. If the king takes, it's still mate on the spot. But knight takes c1, wins. And why? Well, b3 is the only move for black. And then the winning move is knight d3. This is an important move and that's why on the first move the pawn, this pawn, had to go to d4 and not to d3. That's why d4 was the only solution. Black again has no choice, has to play the pawn, b2 and knight e5. We're going to checkmate black. Yes, black can queen, but here is knight f7, checkmate. And that's the solution. If after knight e5 you don't queen, but you promote to a knight, then there is simple, simply king d3 and there's nothing you can do against knight f7 checkmate on the next move. So let's quickly recap. The only move that wins here is d4 and not d3. We need to that square d3 for the knight later. Black only has one move b4. King d2 only move. You have to play like this. King b2 leads to a draw. C1 queen only move, you have to take with the knight, because taking with the king is still mate. Black again has no choice, and there goes the knight to d3. Black still has moves, b2, but that gives white time to close the mating net. Knight e5, and if you promote, there is knight f7 checkmate. Quite a genius construction, J. Munch, 1907. Let's go to the second one. This one, and I am cursing myself because I threw away the magazine before writing down the name of the composer. So my apologies to the composer of this problem. It's white to play and win again. And we see a bishop against a knight and two pawns. What strikes is that the white king is far away and dominated by the black king. How can white win here? Of course, it's all about pushing the spawns if possible and indeed the first move of this of the solution is c4 c5 now we want to stop the pawns but we cannot play bishop d5 to control 
this diagonal because the knight will just take the bishop. But we still have a defense. We can play knight, sorry, bishop b1 with the idea of bishop e4 controlling the diagonal. If you play now c6 with white, there is bishop e4 and you cannot take on b7, the bishop will just take back. And of course it's important that the knight is in the way of the c-pawn as well. So after bishop b1, what can white do? Well, here is a very beautiful move, and that's why I picked this composition for this video. Look at this move. Knight c7 to e6. Wow, what is that? Just putting the knight on prise on e6. Let's first look if you don't take, but play your plan of bishop e4 to control the diagonal. Well, then we see why the knight is good on e6, because we have knight g5 check with the old knight fork on king and bishop. And that will take the bishop out of the game. King f4, knight takes, king takes, and the breakthrough, c6, you have to take b7, and white will queen and win this chess game. Okay, so after knight e6, we have to take that knight. Looks good, we're a piece up, f takes e6. But now, white can play c6. And we're too late with our bishop e4 plan, because now there is no knight on c7, so we have c7. And most importantly, this pawn is now blocking the bishop f5 move to control the c8 square. So knight e6 also lured the black f-pawn to the e6 square, and that's why white is winning in this position. After c6, if we take, then there is b7 again, and we cannot control the b8 square. Our bishop is off the light squares. So we have the solution. Quick recap. c5 is the first move, and then bishop b1 with the idea of bishop e4 to control the pawns. Then the beautiful move, knight e6, giving the knight away. Bishop e4 doesn't work because of the knight g5 check fork. So we have to take the knight, but then there is c6. And bishop e4 won't work because of c7. And then the black e-pawn is in the way. And if we take, there is b7 and white queens. And we'll win this game because of his extra material. Beautiful. And again, apologies for not being able to give you the name of the composer. I saved the best for last. This is a composition from A.O. Herbstmann, published in 1927. White to play and win. We have bishops of opposite color. We have a lot of pawns. But this, this is, of course, all about the white A pawn that wants to go, wants to take on b7 and then promote on b8. That's what this position is all about. It's white to play and win. Well, can we not take on b7 straight away? No, we can't, because then there is this maneuver from black. The bishop, f8 check, and the king has to play. For example, king takes c6, and then bishop d6, protected by the king, controlling the promotion square. And this is not easy to win for white, if it's winnable at all. So, taking on b7 straight away doesn't work. The first move here, the only move that wins, is the beautiful move d4 check. Well, we can, we have to play our king. We can play king e6, for example. But then there is bishop and g4 check. And the king, the black king, has to keep controlling the d6 square to make the bishop f8 d6 maneuver possible to control the a-pawn. So going to let me get rid of the arrows. Going to f6 is not good, because then a takes b7 wins, and b8, queen, is the next move. So, after bishop g4 check, you have to play f5 to keep the bishop f8 d6 maneuver in the position. And then white sacrifices his bishop in this line. Very nice. Bishop takes f5 check, and when you take back... Then there is a takes b7, and you don't have the bishop f8 d6 
maneuver anymore to control the b8 square, so this wins for white. There are no other moves after the bishop takes f5 check to keep controlling the d6 square to make keep that bishop f8 d6 maneuver in the position. So after d4 check you cannot go to e6 as we just saw. But after d4 check you can go to e4 to bring another defense in the position, which is bishop takes d4 check and then bishop back to e5 to control the b8 square. That's also a defense for black. So what after king e4 then? Well after king e4 there is a bishop check. We saw another check in the previous variation but this check works as well. White wins here because after king d3 important because we have to keep the d4 square protected because we want to keep this bishop takes d4 check and then bishop back to e5 maneuver in the position to keep the b8 square protected. So we want to we have to do that otherwise we're going to lose this game but then there is bishop e2 check okay king back to e4 because if you take the bishop then a takes b7 wins again and you cannot do anything against b8 queen on the next move so after bishop e2 check you go back to e4 with your king and still have the bishop takes d4 move in the position but then white takes on b7 after all. What is that? Because we had this defensive maneuver, bishop takes d4 check, which is the only move here, king c4, important move, and then bishop e5, and now the b8 square is protected. All is okay as it looks for black apart from one small detail, because now suddenly there is a checkmate on the spot in the position with bishop d3. Quite amazing. Quick recap, d4 check is the first move and then king e6 doesn't work as we saw so the main line is king e4 to bring bishop takes d4 check and bishop e5 in the position as a way to protect the b8 square but then white wins after all with bishop f3 check, king d3 you have to keep the d4 square protected, bishop e2 check you cannot take the bishop because of a takes b7 king back to e4, but then white takes on b7 anyway. You have to protect the b8 square, and the only way to do that is by bishop takes d4, check to win a move, king c4, and bishop e5. All looks okay, but suddenly there is a checkmate in the position, bishop d3. A composition from A. O. Herbstmann, published in 1927. Hope you enjoyed these three compositions. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up, please subscribe to the Chess 2 Progress channel, and please leave a comment. You also may want to check out my Chess 2 Impress channel. The link is in the description box. This is Rick for Chess 2 Progress. Thank you for watching.